Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. So I want you to meet Alfie Evans. His parents are Tom and Kate Evans. He was born on May 9th, 2016 in Liverpool, England, in the UK. In December of 2016, he was admitted to Alder Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool for fits and seizures. His condition would deteriorate into a coma, in which he would spend the next 12 months being put on life support after receiving a chest infection. It's December 11th, 2017. The hospital applied to get a court to remove Tom and Kate's parental rights so that they could remove Alfie from life support. The parents attempted to get Alfie out of the hospital and into a hospital in Italy for treatment, whereas the hospital argued that in court, continuing life support is not in Alfie's best interests. The case was overseen by Judge Justice Hayden, and yes, that's his actual name. In the Family Division of the Supreme Court in London, the ironically named judge says that he will make a decision if the two parties can't agree. It's now February 20th, 2018. I should note that Alfie has been in the hospital for 14 months now, and doctors still can't figure out what's wrong with him. According to Liverpool Echo, Alfie has two variants in his mitochondrial DNA consistent with a mitochondrial disease that causes muscle weakness, seizures, and developmental disability. I'll uh, just assume you know what mitochondrial DNA is. The problem is that Liverpool Echo is unclear who did the testing and how, so it's fair to take that with a grain of salt. So on February 20th, 2018, Judge Hayden ruled with Alder Hay Children's Hospital that his life support should not be continued. This despite Tom Evans, Alfie's dad, arguing that his son looked him in the eye. On March 1st, the parents made cases to three courts of appeals. On the 6th, the first court of appeals upheld the high court ruling. On March 20th, the Supreme Court refuses to adjudicate the case. On March 28th, the European Court of Human Rights declined to look at the matter, citing no apparent human rights violations. Protesters, known as Alfie's Army, demonstrate against the court's decision, forming on April 12th. On April 16th, another appeal upheld the High Court's decision. On the 20th, the third appeal is denied. On April 23rd, the European Court of Human Rights denies an appeal by the parents to overturn the High Court's decision again. However, the Italian government granted Alfie Evans Italian citizenship in a bid to get Alfie transferred from Alder Hay to a children's hospital in Rome, Bambino Gesù, and I'm probably be butchering that name too. However, life support for Alfie was withdrawn by doctors at 9.21 p.m. on the 23rd, though it's unclear which time zone this occurred. However, Alfie was able to breathe on his own, and the hospital has since given him water and oxygen, but no food. On the 24th, in an emergency hearing, the High Court ruled against allowing Alfie Evans to be transported to Rome for treatment, though a plane is on standby to fly Alfie to Rome. Tom Evans says that he's had to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to keep Alfie alive. They are giving him his fluid. It took him six hours to fight for fluid and for oxygen from last night. Uh, at some point, I had to give him mouth to mouth because his lips went blue and he was he was really fighting with his with his with his breathing. So, me and his mum were giving him mouth to mouth and uh, we suctioned him and just kept on top of him all night and we done basically what the nurse should have done to sustain his life. The situation is developing at the time of this recording, but here's what's really going on: this two-year-old boy, this child whether or not he lives or dies, is being determined by the state. I mean, yes, it's the hospital that's pulling the plug, but it's an NHS hospital, which means it's run by government bureaucrats, so it's the state. Now, maybe the government hospital has a point. Maybe there's nothing the Rome hospital would be able to do, and Alfie Evans is suffering and going to die anyways, so prolonging his pain is pointless. Therefore, the humane thing to do is euthanasia. Maybe. Even so, this is not a decision the state should make on the child's behalf. The child is not the property of the state, you totalitarian assholes! This decision should be up to the parents, and the parents have made their position abundantly clear. They're fighting like hell to keep their child from dying. The ho a hospital, a place that's supposed to help people, wants to murder a child. Just, just think about this for a minute. Whether or not a child lives or dies is up to the state. How can they do this? Forget about questions about the state's legitimacy. Is this moral? 
Is life sacred? Who does the child belong to? According to the UK government, no, life is not sacred, and children belong to the state. They're the ones putting cops in front of the hospital in the hospital room to stop the parents from liberating their son! Those of you who defend the government hospital's actions, you know who you are. Don't you dare talk to me about Alfie's suffering when the hospital has tried to asphyxiate the child. And when he began breathing on his own, they decided it was in Alfie Evans' best interest to starve to death. That's suffering, as is refusing to allow him to be treated by another, less psychotic hospital. Did I mention the cops? That's right. UK police has 30-something officers stopping protesters and the father from liberating his sick son from his imprisonment. This is what the UK is using its policing power for, stopping a father from helping his own son. Gee, what else have the UK police been up to? Arresting Count Dankula for posting a video, then forcing him to pay a fine because someone found it offensive. Someone got arrested for flipping the bird to a police camera and may face eight months in prison because of it. God forbid you need to spread some peanut butter on a bagel in London. A woman can be arrested for posting rap lyrics on social media, but the moment, the very instant, a hospital wants to kill a two-year-old Italian citizen, they're more than happy to help. Hundreds of thousands of underage girls raped, tortured, and murdered by Muslim rape gangs? Eh. A father trying to save his own son? Stop right there, criminal scum! That's not allowed! I refuse. The hospital has kidnapped this child, and the state is running defense for the hospital's rampant immorality. It's sick. These doctors who betrayed their oath to first do no harm. These inquisitors of the religion of statism who stand idle while a child is deliberately starved to death. And then there's the judges, these judges, who in their hubris became the arbiters over life and death. The ones who get to write the final chapter in this human being's life in an unholy alliance with the doctors of this government hospital, who are fighting like hell to kill a child. And the European courts of human rights can't find a human rights violation. What about the child the government's trying to murder? This is evil. This is utterly reprehensible and totally indefensible. These monsters should be ashamed for what they're doing. If you can get fucking Pope Francis from his busy schedule undermining Catholicism to speak out against you, you know you screwed up. If I'm using emotionally charged language, it's because I'm freaking pissed off about this injustice. You want facts? Here are the facts. The state's existence cannot be ethically justified. Involuntary death by another is murder. Voluntary death by another is assisted suicide or euthanasia. The parents have a natural authority over the child and the right to consent on his or her behalf. A parent is, therefore, the one who should give consent to euthanasia. The state is initiating force to kill Alfie Evans without the parent's consent. Alfie Evans is being killed involuntarily. Alfie Evans is being murdered by his own government. Prove. Me. Wrong. And those of you who want to liberate children from parents, shut up. You aren't liberating Jack. You're enslaving children to the state. This isn't the first time this has happened either. Charlie Gard is another young boy with a similar illness who was sentenced to death by the UK's universal healthcare system rather than being allowed to be flown out and seek treatment elsewhere. All life is sacred. The Bible warns us, thou shalt not kill. For a people who fail this commandment, the consequences of their sin shall be visited upon their children's children. Those consequences? The wages of sin is death. So what does that mean, practically? Well, a society that's institutionalized death through a coercive monopoly is a society of free speech fines that allows underage girls to be raped and tortured by the thousands. We can do better than this. This is something we cannot afford to ignore. What happens to the least of us happens to all of us. So if we are to affirm our own right to not be murdered, we have to stand against the evil god of the statist priesthood and say enough. You will not take this one. So what do we do? The simplest thing is to talk about it. Spread the word on social media. Talk to your friends about it. Share this video. The word must go out. Also, 
check out www.savealfieevans.com. They have a donate page for you to help the family financially. Link in the description. As you might imagine, all that litigating's gotta be expensive. Even if you can't donate, sharing the page makes it more likely to be seen by someone who will. So share and send some love to the Evans while you're at it. Thank you and God bless. Questions, comments, critique? What implications does this have on life under statism? How soon until a next kid with mitochondrial disorder is marked for death? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.